going on y'all welcome back to the chaos i'm ryan and we actually got chaos on location today we made the trek down to atlanta because we're headed to formula drift at road atlanta so i'm so excited we made the journey last year for the very first time and this has always been my favorite track even just watching it on tv but seeing it in person last year has me hooked so I'm trying to make it an annual event last year we were able to make both pro spec day and pro day um, unfortunately this year we're just down here for the pros we're able to make the the journey for both but i'm excited nonetheless so we're going to take you all along as we walk through the pits because we got a lot of new liveries to check out today so i'm a little bummed though because dean kearney that's my favorite driver he pilots the gen 5 dodge viper he didn't make the make the journey so i'm not sure exactly what's going on with that because he raced long beach so he's in the points championship so who knows but i'm excited to see chris forsberg's new livery vaughn's new livery and just check out everybody and see what's going on in the pits so let's go ahead and hit the road and head for the track
in case it isn't obvious, we've made it back to the house. We're back safely in Raleigh. But wow, what an event. So FD always delivers both, be it <laughs> excitement or just awe-inspiring moments. So um, the best way I can describe that event this year was wild. So we had Rad Dan running off track and it looked like he was about to take out some of the EMS workers. Odie catching fire and turned into a big, big flame show. And then some controversy. Like, I feel like that's the biggest takeaway from this event. And I'm gonna kind of break down how FD is like scored and because it's like a it's a judged event so it's not like a race where there's a clear winner clear loser it's more set up like an action sports like BMX or skateboarding that style where there's three judges uh, they look at line angle style and that's what you're judged off of so of course because it's not black and white I can look at a run and I might be really wowed by one person and then that same you know in this case judge can watch the same exact run and have a completely different viewpoint so there's three of them and you would think you know over the years like i've been watching fd for probably about five seasons or so now and as the seasons go on you kind of get better at becoming like a, a judge yourself and you kind of know the criteria that they're looking at and you can kind of make that decision so like after every battle you know they make their verdict and you can kind of see like why they leaned one way or the other whether you agree with it or not, usually you can kind of at least understand the, the judge's mindset of like, okay, they chose this person over this person for X reason. Well, <laughs> the judging this round was wild. I mean, there's no way, other way to put it. So in particular, the ones that stand out is LZ versus Matt Field. Uh, LZ was leading on a killer lead run and Matt Field just completely blew his chase. So he was playing catch up. He had straightened and like some of the rules, and I think that is the underlying problem for this year, for 2024, is the rules have changed a bit. So last year, basically if you came out of drift, that was an incomplete. Your run was dead. You were dead in the water the moment you your wheel straightened. This year, they put a time limit to it. So you can go straight, but it can't be egregious. So they've dictated about two seconds is what they're considering coming out of drift so matt field i feel like clearly he was just discombobulated in the chase got lost i feel like he straightened so in last year's rules he would 100 percent have zeroed out just been an incomplete run but this year because i guess technically it wasn't by for two seconds he was able to play catch up <laughs> pretty much smash into impede LZ's line during the transition spin him out and Phil got the win so I mean like everybody even in the live stream like looking at the chat in the live stream everybody was so confused because clearly or what should have been clear was L LZ won that battle but instead Matt Field advanced well then the very next run a similar situation happened and it went the opposite way so the judges decided I think that was Simon Olsen in that instance, he was basically spun out. The chase driver looked like he impeded the line, same situation as LZ, but in this situation they sided with the, the lead driver. So it just didn't, it just seemed so inconsistent, which is where the controversy came from. So like I said, you might not always agree, you know, I have my favorite driver, like Dean Kearney, I'd like to see him win, LZ, Forsberg, Vaughn, Ginn Jr. Those are my guys, but there's a lot of times like I can look back, you know, take myself, remove my fandom, and just look at it and be like, yep, they lost. Hands down, the other driver just kicked their butt. And that's fine. But in this situation, like it just seemed inconsistent. And then poor Rome, <laughs> Rome Chapeteer, he got pushed all over the track this event. So every time you turn around, like each run, he was in the gravel or being spun out, being just playing bumper cars with.
So it was him versus Odie, and Odie tapped him, and but the judges ruled that it wasn't a big enough hit to impact his basically initiation. So this was like coming down the hill, turn one, right on initiation, and Odie tags him. Well, you're going, they're going like speeds of 100 miles an hour. You get tagged at that speed. It doesn't take much to then send you off track, at least in my opinion. So that's where the judges, they came in and they said, nope, that wasn't enough to impede his line. Even though he got pushed off track, like there's no debating that. He went off track. But they were saying Odie didn't touch him hard enough to cause that. So I don't know. I'm kind of going to insert clips or whatever and let you all be the judge. But I don't want to detract from the fun that FD is because it's 100% a blast. And I recommend any time that there's an FD event in your area, 100% go. It was so much fun. Walking around the pits is so much fun. I got to meet Ken Gucci, have a little conversation with him and Chris Forsberg. So just that one-on-one -on -one interaction you get with the drivers and walking through the pit, seeing kind of behind the scenes, that's really cool. And that's what I hope to showcase for you all is the pit walk and then practice. So I didn't really film that much of the actual competition just because I wanted to like be in the be in the moment and experience it myself. But if an FD event comes to your area, go. It's a blast. If you do follow the sport, you have to comment below what were your thoughts coming out of Atlanta. So that's my favorite track. And it still provides the most excitement. Like that track's wide open. It does luckily even with all the wrecks and everything, like it gives you enough runoff so that way like cars aren't just completely demolished and, and can't run for the next round unless you're Odie and <laughs> turn into a big fireball. But aside from that, like even Rome being pushed off the track multiple times, he was able to get his car back together and ready to ready to for the next battle. But let me know what you thought about Atlanta and the judging and what needs to change. I look forward to interacting with y'all in the comments. And if you are new around here, make sure you smash that subscribe button. It really helps out. But thanks again for watching. We'll catch y'all in the next one.